Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. I'm really, really excited about today because uh, it's a little different than what we typically do as webinars. Uh, we typically focus on, you know, web apps, desktop apps, that kind of stuff. But today we're going to dive into Unity development. Uh, and I'm really excited about our guest. Uh, but before we get to Andrew, let me go through a little bit of housekeeping because uh, there are a couple questions folks usually ask when we do these webinars. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, first things first, if you're watching us on YouTube and potentially even on Twitch, uh, be sure to ask any questions you have throughout the webinar. Uh, we typically do a Q&A at the end of these things. So, if you have any burning questions that you really want answered, uh, we have our guest. They're happy, typically, to answer those questions. So, feel free to ask. Uh, one of the big questions folks typically ask, uh, is this session being recorded? And yes, of course it is being recorded. You'll be able to watch this and other videos that we've recorded in the past on JetBrains TV. So head on over there, like, subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think of those other videos. But for now, watch this webinar. And if you're watching this in the future, thanks. We appreciate it. So uh, other than that, uh, we can now kind of introduce our guest. Uh, please give a warm welcome to Andrew Stellman. Uh, he's the author of several technical books with co-author Jennifer Green, uh, books like Headfirst PMP, Learning Agile, Applied Software Project Management, uh, Beautiful Teams, which has an awesome zebra cover, by the way. I love it. Uh, and today, Headfirst uh, into C Sharp. So uh, also, uh, Andrew has a surprise for us. So uh, here we go. <laughs> who, who else gives you Pomeranians? Come on, people. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, Samosa is awesome. And uh, a shout out to Jennifer Green's uh, Bull Terrier as well. So Andrew, thank you for joining us again. I'm really excited about this. Uh, and yeah, uh, welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I'm super, super excited about this. Um, cool. Really. Uh, um, and yeah, so, I mean, I guess I'm going to just, uh, should I just dive straight in here? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. All right. So what, uh, what you're looking at, um, if you, uh, if you can see my screen, um, is, uh, the cover of this PDF, uh, head first C sharp unity labs, writer edition. And, uh, what this is is throughout uh, throughout Head First C Sharp, we have a series of Unity Labs. Um, you can actually um, go to our uh, GitHub page and download the first four chapters of the book for free. Um, and then there's a whole a whole page uh, full of these Unity Labs, and we're going to get back to this website uh, shortly. Um, including this writer edition, which has a bunch of writer screenshots in it. Um, the idea here is getting C Sharp developers ramped up as, as quickly as possible in Unity. The reason we included it in a book on learning C Sharp is it turns out that, that uh, Unity is a fantastic way to um, practice your, your C Sharp skills and really level up on them. Um, and our goal was to create a uh, Sort of an easy path, a happy path for new C sharp learners to uh, to 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 ramp up easily in a way that that doesn't give them any roadblocks, kind of takes care of the typical roadblocks in ramping up on Unity, and also reinforces a lot of the ideas we teach in the book. Um, and and what I'm going to do through this webinar is basically just get through as much of this uh, this Unity Lab PDF as you can. Um, at the end of the uh, at the end of the slides, there'll be uh, at the end of this this, this talk, there'll be a uh, a link where you can download this yourself, or you can go straight to our uh, our GitHub our GitHub page. Um, so you'll uh, once you get past the cover and copyright stuff in the book, um, go straight into the labs. Um, the first fifteen minutes or so, we're not going to write any C sharp code. Um, the uh, you know, like I said, Unity is a fantastic tool for learning and exploring, especially when you pair it with a really powerful IDE like Rider. Um, the uh, uh, but there's a lot of blockers. You know, just a lot of a uh, lot of um, speed bumps uh, and pitfalls for people, um, new C# -sharp developers, and also advanced C# -sharp developers 
tend to run into the same pitfalls when ramping up on Unity. And in a lot of cases, it's actually even harder for advanced developers because we come to the table with, with so much uh, stuff that we already know. Um, for those who don't really know, just a quick, Unity is a powerful tool for game design and simulation. It's cross-platform, so this will work on your, uh, on, on your PC and it'll work on your Mac. Um, it's also a really powerful 2D and 3D scene editor. And for this first, this first, uh, uh, for this first lab, what we're going to go is we're going to dive straight in to uh, into the scene editor, because getting your bearings in that is really that's the first pitfall. People often want to jump straight into the code. Just taking a few minutes and getting your bearings with the scene editor will really, really help later on, um, 15 minutes from now, when we start actually writing code. Um, so I'm at, I'm actually going to close Rider here, and let Unity open it, um, and uh, what you'll see here is this is the Unity Hub, um, and there's instructions in the lab for downloading it. Um, this is how you install Unity and launch your project. We're going to jump straight into into a project specifically one I have open because it takes a minute or two to open sometimes. I didn't want to waste your time watching that. Uh, the one thing I want to point out is in preferences under external tools, just make sure that writer is selected. Um, that's the only idea I've installed on this machine right now. Um, and there's instructions for that in the PDF as well. All right, so let's get let's get into this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is if you're going to be following along with what I'm doing, Recommend sticking your uh, um, sticking Unity into into this wide layout, uh, mainly because it'll match the the, the screenshots uh, that I've took, um, and I put it in wide layout because that just happens to be I, I feel like it's the best the best one for taking screenshots. And what you'll see are four panels here. Um, this panel up front, this is the scene window, um, and you use it to edit the objects in your scene, um, including lights. This is a light. This is a camera and then other stuff here. Now, you see this game at the top? This is actually, uh, this switches to the game window and it lets you actually see things from the player's perspective. Um, so you see this camera here? Right now there's nothing in our scene, but this camera is what's shooting. This is, this is what that camera is looking at. This down here is the hierarchy window. This is where all the objects in the scene live. You'll see them all here. Um, here in the project window is all the files that are part of your project. And finally, this inspector, which is, you know, Rider, pretty much every IDE has something similar that lets you inspect the individual, the properties on the individual things in your scene. And finally, you got this guy, which is your little uh, tools tools panel here. Um, and that's uh, that's got tools that we're going to get into in such a, just a minute. So your scene is a 3D environment. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to add a 3D object to it. Um, you can add it by clicking, choosing game object menu and hitting 3D object there, or you can right click on the sample scene. Every time you create a new a new Unity project, it starts off at least if you create it with us uh, the 3D temp the 3D template that I used that we use in the in the labs, it starts off with a sample scene. So I'm going to create a sphere, and boom, it's a sphere. Um, so here's the sphere you added. Um, if you notice, this camera is pointing at that sphere. It's hard to kind of see from that picture, but this is what the camera is seeing now. We, we stuck the sphere there. Um, and what I want to do is go back to the PDF for a second and show you. Um, these are the, the, in the Unity Labs, we're using these game objects. They're called the primitive objects. Um, the, uh, and there's kind of these basic uh, building blocks of the uh, of Unity Unity game behavior, um, you know, lights and cameras, cylinders and cubes are, are kind of familiar, and spheres. Capsules are like cylinders with two spheres stuck on the end, and planes don't are, are sort of two dimensional. They don't have any thickness. They only have a uh, only they only live in two dimensions. And um, and uh, what we're going to do now is uh, play around with some of these guys. So first of all, you've got this view tool. And that 
changes your view. Um, if you uh, hold down Alt, you can rotate it. And if you use a scroll wheel, mouse scroll, you can zoom in and out. Um, if you double click on something in the hierarchy, it'll actually zoom straight into it. And I, I probably, um, funny because it seems so simple. Uh, you know, I just went over how it works in like 20 seconds, but that's actually a massive stumbling block. A I, I suspect that I've, we've got a few people watching this right now who have popped open Unity, were able to get some sort of 3D object stuck into the scene, and then had no idea even how to navigate it. Um, and uh, and just being able to find your way around, um, and also knowing that if you've if you've got things moved around weirdly, oh no, where's my sphere? You can always reset your your layout. And being able to knowing that you can always reset your layout and get your scene view back to that, that's a that's a huge touch point. That's that that gets past one of the big roadblocks. Um, also want to point out up here, this is the scene gizmo. Um, you can flip to the various perspectives. You see it's uh, X, Z, Y, Z, um, and always get back to home. That's really um, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, right. I, I, it's, they did a good job. Um, and throughout the uh, throughout the um, the through later labs, you'll learn you'll learn a little more about things like this perspective versus ISO. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple more. And if you notice, I'm going to hit Q W E R T Y, um, and notice how it's cycling through these guys. Um, that's a really useful thing. You once you start using that, you you find yourself just hitting W or E or T to get between between move, uh, rotate, and scale. Um, so let's use the move tool to move our object. I'm going to make this a little wider. I've got my fonts really big here just for the for the um, for the uh, uh, for the video. If you um, so, I'm, I've kind of made my my inspector window very big. You you probably won't have to if you're playing along at home. Um, this here is a transform component. And we'll talk a little bit more about what components are. Um, notice that it's got a position, x, y, and z. And when I click on this little cone up here and move up and down, I'm moving my sphere up and down. And watch over here on the right in the transform window. So I can move the, I can move the, the, the sphere in any of the planes. Here's the z, here's the x. If you look closely, you'll see there's these three little boxes. That lets you move in the x, y, y, z, or x, z plane. If you hold down shift, now you can move it in the plane that's perpendicular to the scene. The, to the scene. So basically, uh, uh, in, in the sort of the scene camera that you're looking through. And if you hold down control, notice how there's this grid behind you. Um, it, it snaps to that grid. Um, and you'll notice the numbers, uh, the, the, it's kind of a jumpy movement. I, I lift off control, it's smooth. Hold down control, it's jumpy. Um, one other thing, you get your uh, you get your sphere where you don't want it, you can do this. You can reset all the properties, position, rotation, and scale, or you can reset an individual property. So that's, that's the starting point. Now, it's a sphere. Uh, spoiler alert, we're going to rotate it a little bit, but if when it looks like this, it's kind of going to be a little hard to see. So instead, we're going to make it look like something, specifically a billiard ball. Um, I'm going to go back to the, um, um, and if you notice, I'm really following along in this PDF, and that's on purpose. It's so that you can kind of go home, like if you're actually interested in ramping up on Unity, you'll be able to sort of go back and follow along on everything I'm doing. Um, and it's all should be very, we, try to, we put a lot of work into making this step-by-step step and kind of as easy to do as possible. So if you go to the, uh, the GitHub page, um, there's a folder called Unity Labs, and the PDF tells you how to get there. Um, and under there, there's a folder called Billiard Balls, where we've got these textures. Um, and each of these textures is just an image. Um, and... I, I made these, like I just stuck this into, uh, I, I actually, the first version I made, I actually made with MS Paint. Um, I cleaned it up just a little bit in Photoshop um, just because I could mess around with the fonts a little bit better, but literally you can make these things in Paint and 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 
Uh, and what you do is just save the image, saving it as in the downloads. I'm going to open the folder here and go back to Unity and drag this right into my project window. And if you notice, it's sitting there right now. And finally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just drag this right into onto the sphere. I can drag it into the hierarchy, or I can drag it directly. Notice the cursor kind of changes to the same thing, whether I drag it onto the sphere in the hierarchy or to the sphere in the scene window. And bam, it looks like an eight ball. Um, that's another kind of, uh, um, I'm going to keep trying to point out the, uh, the stumbling blocks that a lot of new C Sharp developers have when they, uh, when they start ramping up on Unity. Another stumbling block is um, when you take a picture, like a picture of, you know, photo of your, yourself or of, of, you know, Samosa here um, <laughs> and wrap it uh, and, and wrap it around a sphere, it looks all weird and distorted. And I'm not going to go into the details of how UV, uh, UV maps work, but what I will say is it's basically, it basically uh, kind of, it's kind of what you would expect if you kind of took this as, as a, as a piece of rubber and wrapped it around a sphere and you kind of had to, pull it tight at the top to make it perfectly fit so it 100% covers the sphere. Um, and that's why billiard balls are actually a really good, uh, we, we, we use those a lot because they, they, it's really easy to make them look right. And it's really intuitive. You can kind of see how this thing, this image here, like here's the full image, you can see how it would wrap around a sphere really easily. Mm -hmm. um, and now, uh, um, and and now that's um, what I want to uh, what I want to do is um, I, I wanted to make we wanted to make sure we had a uh, had a a a, a texture on there. Um, and what you can do if if you if you look uh, if in the inspector now it's it's you actually see this component the text the material component here eight ball texture. Um, if I switch to the rotate tool. You can see, I'm going to go back to the uh, transform window. Check out the rotation here. I'm rotating along the Y axis. Um, so you can rotate on the various axes. And here's uh, um, now, and when really, um, when, you know, I feel like almost underappreciated thing in Unity is their help system is amazing. Um, there's a, uh, under help, there's Unity manual and scripting reference. So if you pop open the Unity manual um, and you search for the rotate tool, you can see the, the select tool, there's various tools. Um, uh, I jumped to the wrong thing, but uh, there is, they, they, did a, they did a fantastic job getting, uh, helping you with, with pretty much everything in there. Um, so, uh, but we want to um, notice how we've got the position changed and the rotation changed. I can just reset a single property. So I'm going to reset rotation and watch, keep your eye on the sphere. Now it's back to the original rotation and the rotation is zero, zero, zero. If I do the full reset, it resets all properties, position, rotation, and scale. Um, so I want to, um, I want to, uh, point out another thing we tried to do a lot throughout our throughout not just throughout the unity labs but th uh, throughout the um, throughout the book is we have a lot of question and answer sections uh, and these questions really come from not just the questions that Jenny and I had when we were ramping up on unity but also we talked to a lot of developers and we really we really put some work into trying to identify the pitfalls that people fall into um, and the uh, the um, the uh, you know, for example, we talked about components. You see the word components. We try not to um, we try not to introduce ideas unless they're absolutely needed. It's a, it's a concept called just in time learning, and it's really really powerful when you're trying to actually ramp up on something. Just learn just enough to do the project you're working on right now. Um, but you can. Uh, we, we have to talk about components, so we wanted to talk about what exactly a component is, just enough so you actually understand. Um, you're going to hear me talk about components. For example, the inspector has these components. 
um, if I go to uh, if I go to click on the directional light, the light has a transform component and you can collapse it and a light component. A a game object because all of the things in your scene are game objects. A game object is basically just a container for components, and the components are what actually gives it its behavior. Every one of them has a transform component, so you can uh, like you could actually uh, create an empty one. And if I name this empty game object, and you can also rename them up here, name my empty game object. You notice that it only has uh, it only has uh, a transform component. If I add a component. I can actually add a light component. Um, and if I change it to a directional, you'll see that it, it has the same, uh, it kind of has this, um, now it's, uh, if I move it over here so it's a little easier to see, you know, it kind of looks like our other light. Um, and it kind of, when you click on it, it kind of gives you the same, the same gizmos on top of it. Um, and that's, that's all a light is. A light is a game object with a light component. A camera is a game object with a camera component and an audio listener, which makes sense, right? Like a real camera has a lens and, and, and a microphone. And a sphere is a game object that has these components. Um, I'm not going to go into specifically what they do. Just overall, the these two guys, the mesh filter and mesh renderer, give it its shape. The collider tells it how is how it actually interacts with the other things. We're going to do some physics stuff later. And yeah, we actually do some interesting physics throughout these labs. And then it has a sh has has this uh, this shader, uh, this material, which uh, which uh, which gives it its it which actually makes it look like uh, in this case an eight ball. And that's with that we just got to the end of lab one, um, kind of as promised about fifteen minutes, um, and that's um, believe it or not that is enough orientation to really get you past like a whole bunch of initial roadblocks and hurdles that a lot of C-sharp developers run into. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, and, and we're now we're gonna jump, we're actually gonna jump into code now. Um, and while I probably won't finish all four labs in this download, and I definitely won't finish all of the labs in the, uh, in, on, on our website, um, I'm gonna give us enough to get started and, and hopefully give you some insight. Um, one of the things that I wanna point out is at the end of each of these labs, we have this get creative section where we, um, if you want to ramp up on Unity, and really you want to ramp up on anything, but especially a creative tool like Unity, get creative, play with it, experiment with it. But it's sometimes really hard to figure out how to experiment. So what we did was we um, what we did was we uh, uh, we kind of gave you a, a little bit of a framework, some stuff that you can uh, some stuff that you can use to uh, to get um, to get creative. In a way that you're not gonna you're not gonna run into anything that's gonna cause uncomfortable questions because there's just there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of places where you can just run into a uh, into a dark into a dark corner here and um, we're trying to really help you avoid those. So without further ado, now let's actually start writing some code. And the way we do that is with scripts. Um, if you notice. Uh, when I click Add Component, if you hadn't, if you had noticed it at the bottom of it, it's always got this new script. No matter where, what you do in this Add Component box, um, the idea here is that components do stuff, and the way you tell them to do stuff is with C# -sharp scripts, and that's why this is such a great tool for learning and exploring C# -sharp as well as as, as fun game development. Um, and here's basically how it's going to work. First. You're going to attach your script to your game object. Second, we're going to use Rider to edit that script. And third, we're actually going to play the game in Unity by using this handy little play button here. Um, and finally, we're going to use Unity and Rider together to debug the script. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to delete this empty game object there and the sphere. I'm going to add a component here. Add new script, and I'm going to call it one ball behavior. Create an add. Now, you can tell probably from my accent that I'm American. I'm actually American Canadian. Um, <laughs> the uh, 
I was I was gonna say that you. I was like, oh, that you is very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I grew up I grew up in Brooklyn. I don't sound like I grew up in Brooklyn, but uh, when I I will definitely walk the dog. So um, so that's that's the core of my accent. My family is all up in Toronto, um, and I, I do have uh, I do I do have Canadian citizenship, Polish citizenship too. Weirdly, um, the uh, the um, but if you notice, I, I use the British spelling behavior O U R. Um, when I add a when you add a component and you add the new script, you see how it says new behavior O U R script. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go into the assets window, make this smaller. Here's the script I just added, and double click on it. And because I'd set up at the very beginning, I'd set the, the external tool to Rider. Unity is now going to ask Rider to open up the, the solution associated with this project. Um, and uh, this is another stumbling block um, that a lot of, especially experienced, especially experienced C sharp developers have. If you notice, there is no CS proj file. There's no SLN file. This isn't. This is a solution. It said it was opening a solution, but it's not a um, MS build solution. Uh, so, um, and there's you can do a huge deep dive into exactly how that works. Um, but you can, you know, for now, just let Rider take care of it. It's super good at it. Rider actually is extremely good at integrating with integrate with Unity. The Unity integration is freaking top notch. Um, and uh, I'll try to point out some ex some extra cool stuff that the that the, that the Rider folks that you guys have added. Um, because it just makes it real pleasure to work with. Um, notice that extend this extends a class called mono behavior. First of all, notice it's O U R. Um, everything is behavior with O U R British spelling. Get used to it. I did. I got used to it to the point where when I'm writing text in a book, I've started writing uh, behavior like that, and I've had to have autocorrect correct me. Um, and I've my autocorrect set to U.S. English because my my books are written in U.S. English. Um, <laughs> The, uh, um, and what we're going to do right now, and I'm going to actually copy and paste all the code out of the uh, PDF, um, mainly just so you can see that's what we're doing. And, and you can see and all the steps I just showed you are right there. I'm literally following along with it, which is why I don't have a slide deck here. Um, I'm just going off the PDF. So there's no, no, no question of what I'm doing. So I just copy that line of code. And I'm pasting it. You can see the whole class is in here. I'm pasting it, pasting this into the update method. Um, and you see how at the bottom it says refreshing in Unity Editor for a second? If I go back to Unity Editor, if I do it before that, you can see a, a, a window, a little pop-up window just disappeared. And now when I click on the script in the assets in the in project window, you can see that it actually figured out, okay, it's got there and it, it's, it's sort of rebuilt itself. One thing I want to point out right now, see the little asterisk next to sample scene? I'm going to hit Control S and save. Save early, save often. Um, it's really easy to accidentally lose work in Unity. In Unity, um, playing your game, we're about to play the game, does not automatically save your scene. That is a we reinforced that a bunch of times in our Unity labs. I'm going to say it again. And and actually, it's funny. Um, that's one of the cool things Rider does. It, it's got some built-in stuff to help you make sure things are saved when you because you can you can also we'll see later you can um, you can play the game from inside Rider. Um, so I'm going to hit play. Just hit the play button at the top, and woo, check it out. Eight balls rotating. So why is it rotating? I'm going to make this a little wider so you can see the full class here. Um, and what we did was we added this transform.rotate line to the update method. Um, now, the uh, if you're an experienced C# -sharp developer, one thing that's already going to be itching at you is Wait, we're extending mono behavior, but we're not overriding update and start. Clearly, Unity is calling update. What the heck's going on? Um, Unity basically uses reflection um, or something very similar to reflection but, um, to find and, and execute its uh, its uh, its um, meth these methods. Uh, it, and it's it, there's a ton of stuff they've done for performance reasons um, because, as you can imagine. Game performance is hard. The game performance, perf log on to any uh, any like you know Reddit or, or or any place where people complain about video games, and you'll see a whole lot of people screaming, "Why didn't they optimize this?" 
And then um, if you want to, if you have a friend who's a game developer and you want to kind of bring them to tears, just ask them, why didn't you optimize this? Uh, because that's one of the hardest things in game. Like the things that they'll, that they'll do to squeeze out an extra, an extra frame per second um, and, and phenomenal. And speaking of frame per second, what happens is the start method is called before before the first frame update, and they, the default uh, Unity template class template here says that. And then update is called once per frame. And what we're doing here is let me stop this, and then go back to Rider. And what you can see is uh, is um, the, uh, uh, the 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 tooltip help the XML doc is really really good. Um, and there's a couple of different parts here. Um, and here's another thing, I'm gonna go back to this PDF. Um, if you notice, uh, we have this section called uh, Your Code Up Close. Uh, we use this a lot, uh, where we will we'll talk specifically about the, the a lot of the ideas that, um, that you're gonna encounter. We try to really keep it to just the ideas that are, are important right now. Again, getting back to that idea of just-in-time learning. Um, so what we've got is one line of code caused our cube, our sphere to rotate. Um, what it did was first it used this transform.rotate. Um, if I go back to Rider uh, and I hover over transform, this is the transform attached to this game object. So, and, uh, and in fact, if I, if I control click on it um, and it goes to the external source here, um, you can actually see it's a, it's, it's a, it's a transform in the, in Uni the Unity and it's a, a class called transform. Um, uh, in the uh, Unity engine namespace, and uh, and if you can, if we if we knack, if you sort of dive into that, um, you'll uh, you'll see this. Uh, there's a position. Um, there's actually a bunch of stuff in there. That I'm not going to get into, but if you if you wanted to do that yourself, you'll you'll see that uh, that eventually you will find ways to figure out the position, rotation, and scale. This is the transform. That the object that this is a visual representation. This is the visual inspection of that transform object. There's a transform object attached to every one of these Unity game objects. If you're absolutely new to C sharp, we don't talk about that. You notice we don't go into detail in that in the book. I kind of threw that in there for people who are advanced, more advanced C sharp developers who want to kind of get us hints of what's going on behind the scenes. But from a just in time learning perspective, pretty much everything you need to know is on this page. A frame for those of you who understand kind of what frames are, but really want to want to get a little better understanding. A frame, fundamental concept of animation. It just draws one frame, Unity draws one frame and then another and another, and your eye kind of interprets those frames as movement. We probably all know this, but you know, you can't take anything for granted. And that's the level of that's the level of just in time learning we try to in, sort of inject here. The transform.rotate method tells the transform tell, tells the game object to rotate. Um, it's got this this particular overload has two two uh, uh, we pass we're passing it two arguments one the axis around which it's rotating and the number of degrees to rotate and finally there's this really super magical thing called time dot delta time um, if you notice there's a little handwritten note here it's uh, talking about how it's static this Unity Lab came between chapters um, chapters four and five in the book um, so. In uh, chapter three, we introduced this idea of, you know, this is a book about learning C-sharp. We're talking about static. Here's what static means and what static objects are. Um, so we're kind of reinforcing that idea. Again, getting back to the idea that this is actually a really, really good way to reinforce your knowledge of C-sharp if you're learning. Um, God, honestly, I got to say, we got lucky. It turns out Unity actually is really, you know, I was hoping it would be when we started out on, on writing the fourth edition where we added the Unity stuff. It turns out it really is. Um, time dot delta time is a number of of so the number of seconds or fractions of a second elapsed since the last time the last frame. So uh, if we want to rotate 180 degrees per second, and we've got uh, seconds seconds per frame, and this is upgraded updated once per frame, we just multiply the number of degrees by time dot delta time, and that will give us the number of degrees per second. Um, but now let's uh, you know. Let's take advantage of you know we don't have to use books just use books for this. Let's really take advantage of the fact that we've got this amazing IDE attached to Unity. Um, and when I say attached, notice how it says up here attached to the Unity editor. When I go to the Unity 
in the bottom lower right corner, see how it says debugger enabled, but it's got a little exclamation point. Um, I'm going to click the little debug button. And now, if you notice, it's just starting its debugging, initializing debugger down there. And once it's happy, now this, this uh, then it says debugger attached down here and got a little check mark. Um, the reason the reason I wanted to do that is now this is attached just like you attach a debugger to any process. It's attached to Unity. Um, what's convenient is the play, the uh, the play edit the uh, they they you notice that the run button um, has actually changed to play edit. Um, we can if I click this play button, uh, it'll start the game. And what I did was I put a breakpoint right on that line. So I'm going to start the game. Um, and this actually, if I go back to Unity, you'll you'll see. Um, I alt tabbed to it. It's going to take a second because it's thinking. I alt tabbed to it. It actually it did exactly the same. Rider basically told Unity to press this button essentially. So now it's just waiting, and we're waiting for. Uh, wait, what's happening? Why is that window just sitting there? Oh right, I put a breakpoint in there, and it's broken at that point. So now we're 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 we're. Uh, um, and if I hover over delta time, check that out. It's a number. That's the number of seconds. 0.01999 seconds since the last frame. If I use then to use this the normal rider debugging resume program, and go to the next frame. I'll do a couple more. Seems to be consistent now. It now seems to have uh, it's sped up a little bit. 0.33333. Um, the uh, um, this is this is. You can, and what's funny is you could, if you divide one by this number, you'll actually get the number of frames per second. I think that works out to about 300 something, um, which seems super fast, but there's only one thing in our scene. So obviously it's going to run, run super fast. Put a bunch of stuff in your scene, it's going to run slower. That's why optimization is annoying. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple of cool things here. Um, first, okay, first, uh, more. If I go to, if I change the hit count to, multiple of 500, and then I resume and I'll tab back. It's going to run for a bit and then break again. Um, what it did is that let 500 frames go by. Um, I'm going to resume again and let it run for a bit. And I'll tab back, 500 frames went by again. Here's something else that's cool. I'm going to convert this to a Unity pause point. This is, I, I this is, um, I, it doesn't sound that cool if you haven't done a lot of game dev, but that's super, super, super cool. Now when I resume, instead of breaking, what it did is it pressed the pause button for me. And now what I can do is when your game is paused, you can inspect the uh, you can inspect your game objects, move them around. Like I'm gonna move this around here. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate it so it's a little off kilter. And now, if I if I resume my game again, um, whoops, sorry, I uh, I pressed the wrong button and I, uh, I I stopped my game. Let me play it again. Um, and now, when it's going to pause it again, let me let me rotate it off kilter, move it somewhat, and now unpause it. Notice how now it's moved. That let me pause my game and mess around my my game objects while I was running. Super super useful debugging tool. Now I stop my game. Um, the um, I'm gonna I'm also gonna take off my my uh, breakpoint. Um, so we talked about um, now. Also, I want to point this out. I'm gonna point it again later. Um, notice how I messed around with the location of this thing. It was moved it, moved it, turned it off kilter, but it's back to zero, zero, zero. That's because when you work with a game object, um, you uh, when you work with a game object, what you do is you're um, um, uh, when if you, if you make the changes while the game is running, it's going to revert back to the way it was after the game is done running. Um, so if you want to actually make sort of permanent changes to it, you have to make those changes when the game's not running. And as usual, save early, save often. I'm going to reset this, though. So now I'm going to add a cylinder. 
Um, and you notice if you actually zoom in a little, you can kind of see the they're they're both exactly one unit wide. Um, and you can see the 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 thing is um, the billiard ball is kind of poking out of the sides. Now I'm going to switch to the scale tool. The scale tool lets you change the scale of things. See, I'm making it wider along the narrower along the z-axis. Um, on the y-axis, uh, sorry, the x-axis, I can make it this. I can make it super tall, or super narrow, um, and I'm actually going to change it manually. You can always enter numbers directly. I'm 0.1, 20, 0.1, making it super tall and wide. And now when I run the game, you kind of see a visualization of that zero, that uh, the, that y-axis running through the zero point. Um, let's let's make our and I got a little far away, so I'm just going to reset my my view. Let's do something kind of. Uh, uh, and this is the this is the last really this is the, the one of the last the fun, really important core core things in your uh, in how you're in, in how you work with Unity. Um, let's let's add some fields and see what happens to those fields. Um, again, I'm going to copy them straight out of. Uh, um, and if, as you notice, as I fled, as I as I went by, um, went through everything I'm doing right now is in this PDF. Uh, so you'll be able to do it all at, all on your own. Follow along. I added four fields, x, y, z, and degrees per second. Now you notice um, Rider actually has uh, if, at some point it might actually display a rule. Um, yeah, right. See the name the, the degrees per second does not match the Unity serialized field. Uh, the suggestion name is lowercase degrees per second. Um, we're going to live with that because one of the reasons we did this is. Um, we're trying to stay consistent with the code throughout the book, and we use Pascal case and not Camel case for public uh, for public um, uh, fields and and properties uh, in, in throughout the book. Um, that's a, kind of an example of of compromises we make to make the learning easier, um, and we do a lot of that. And it's really important, uh, and it's, it's uh, it takes a lot of a lot of thinking, a lot of working with uh, with our readers over the years, um, a lot of learning from edition to edition. OK, so I'm going to go back to Sphere. And hey, look at this. Notice how those fields I added already popped up. X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, degrees per second. It took the, it took the Pascal case, and it'll, and, and it'll do this with Camel case too, put spaces in front of the uppercase letters to make it easier to read. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take this code here, copy it. This is a new code for our update method. The um, and before I um, before I, uh, I I run it, just notice it's got it does two things. At first, it creates this vector three, which is a struct, and that's just a three dimensional vector. Which we're going to talk some more about what a vector is because. I know some people will have know exactly what it is, but some people have kind of like a dusty, dusty memory from from school of I kind of know what vectors are, but could you kind of remind me? Um, this is rotating around this vector, and and then the degrees per second. So we basically letting you set the vector and set the speed, the rotation speed. Um, let me play this in Unity and then get back to Unity. So. While we're doing this, I'm going to change this degrees to second for a second from 180 to 360. I'm keep your eye on the sphere. Hey, it's going twice as fast. Now I'm going to change it to 720. Now it's going super fast. Now I'm going to change it to 90. Now it's going super slow. And change it back to 360. Now I'm going to change x rotation. But instead of entering a number, or, um, I'm going to click. If you watch in the lower right corner in the script, I'm going to click on the X rotation label here and drag up. Notice how it's got it's got the mouse cursor turns into this. Um, it lets you actually you can do this in any of these labels. You can the numeric ones. You can click the label and drag the value. And notice that now I'm going to just keep dragging up and down. Go look at the ball. See how it's kind of doing wacky stuff. 
we're going to use this as a way to learn a little bit more about what vectors are. Um, and this is a page we have. Um, every time you learn about vectors, you see this picture. Um, if you took geometry in school, you saw this picture and probably drew it and hopefully got it right on the test. Um, but a whole lot of what we try to do is get this intuitive graph, like give this, get this stuck into your brain but more easily rather than just make this a concept you have to memorize. And Unity's a great, got some great tools for doing that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this extra line of code, debug.drawray, copy, um, and paste it into our code here, just like it is in the PDF. Save and play. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't realize Unity had that kind of like debug class. That's really Unity cool. has some phenomenal debugging tools, and we take advantage of some of several of them throughout the uh, throughout the um, uh, through, throughout the, uh, the all the Unity labs. That um, the uh, the debug .ray is awesome, and we'll we'll see we'll see the power of it. Now, you notice nothing's changed here in the game scene. Um, let me make this a little bigger. Um, in the game, in the game, in the game panel, the game window. But if I go to the scene window, um, and I go back to the hand tool, if I zoom in a little bit, um, and now what I'm going to do is change that X rotation. Hey, look at that! See that thing? That's a ray. Um, that array, array is uh, array is just a sort of a, that's a term from ge geometry. Which is basically a, it's essentially a way you visualize a vector. It's a thing, something that's got a, a it's got a direction and a magnitude, or say a, you know, a length essentially, um, and uh, and what we're doing here is um, if I reset this, you and I, and then I move around it, you can kind of see that it's and you can kind of see the ray kind of project into the ball itself. It's rotating around that ray. Um, if I change the rotation a lot, and then I reset again, now you can see it's rotating around the ray again. It's 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 uh, that's this is the axis of rotation. Um, it doesn't it doesn't actually matter how long it is. Um, it's uh, so if I if I if I change, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually reset. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to zero, uh, one zero. So it and reset this. Um, and I'm gonna go back to my reset there. Um, if you what but if you notice, um, making this bigger doesn't change anything. But when I as soon if keep your eye on it, as soon as I hit zero, I'm gonna drag it down. It's about to hit zero. Notice how it, it reverses direction. Um, because it's pointing the other direction. Mm -hmm. That's um and uh, there's something else that's kind of cool here. Um, if I add one more parameter, 0.5f, uh, if I hover over it, it sees the duration. And now I go back and play the game. And we use this duration later um, in future labs. Nothing happens at the game view, but if I go to the scene view, check it out, it makes these little trails. Um, <laughs> it's race. Cool. It sticks around for half a second. Um, and while you're not going to use this in a game because this is a debug tool, I feel like this also kind of gives you an idea of um, just seeing that, like, oh, a lot of cool stuff that we see in video games is just someone did something little like that. And they're like, whoa, that looks cool. Let me see if I can use that. I know that a lot of people saw that and thought, I bet you could use that in a game. I bet it would look cool. Um, you can't actually use this in a game because of a debug tool, but you could easily... Um, you could you could make something that does that has similar behavior, and then yeah, you could use that in a game. Um, I know we're getting close to the end of this. I'm I'm gonna I, we should be able to get get through the end of this Unity Lab, um, and I want to just give you a really quick sneak peek at what what you'd build next. Um, the uh, um, when you rotate your ball around it. So right now we're going to rotate your ball around a point in the scene. Right now it's rotating around this middle here. Um, what we're going to do is change the code. So instead of using trans 
transform.rotate, it's going to use transform.rotate around. And looks the same, but if I pause the game and then I move it out here and resume, sorry, um, again, my mistake, I, I, I had the, I had the, uh, the play instead of the pause and resume. Now it's actually rotating around. It's instead of rotating around its center, it's rotating around a point in the scene, specifically this axis. And if we change the rotation and we change that axis, um, you can see what it's rotating. It's rotating around it. And if I zoom out and I uh, reset it, you can kind of see that it's rotating around that axis. Um, If we move, if we move the, uh, you can actually move it while it's playing. Um, um, this, um, so this is, uh, and this is all the code that we were going to write in this Unity Lab. Um, this is, uh, we've got a, a, a couple of things that we have sort of, a really big goal of ours is to get a lot of these ideas again, intuitive, get them into your brain. So it's not just rote, it's not just thinking, it's not just studying, but it's actually understanding it. And we just give a couple of steps to help you kind of explore it. Because um, Unity, like you said, they can just, you can basically mess around with everything. Um, and, and you'll be able to explore how the whole, the whole tool, how, how, not just how the tool works, not how Unity works, but how these, these kind of these 3D concepts work. Um, and finally, we have another get creative. A uh, chance to experiment on your own with C Sharp and Unity. Um, the uh, you know add cube cylinders, try rotating them. Add lights, rotating lights around is really cool. And finally, um, this is a this is like a safe space to experiment with uh, with with some C Sharp. So you know try using plus equals to add a value to the fields. What happens? What happens when you when you increment values if other you know in, increment fields every time the frame updates? Um, what happens if you know? Then you can you can uh, reset the field if it gets too large. It's a that's an interesting experiment, and you start to you start to get a sense of how you how you can actually write code to move things around your uh, to around around your scene. Um, so that's uh, and what I want to do now because I know we're we're just got about five more minutes, right? Um, what I wanted to do is get a really quick sneak preview of what you're going to do in Unity Labs three and four. And for that, I'm going to go back to the Unity Hub, and uh, I'm going to reload load this one up, um, and you'll see what it like the uh, the time it takes to load Unity, which is why I I, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to uh, uh, make everybody sit through that and wait. But while this is loading, um, I'm going to give you a quick a sneak preview. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to build a game. Um, we're going to build on the code. We're going to actually start out like the very first thing you do is you're going to start out with, uh, you know, create create the materials, um, but then you're going to start out with that same uh, exactly the same code that we just ended with. Um, you can comment out the debug.drawway just because we're not going to need it. You don't have to though. Um, and we're going to make a game where as you um, when you start, the scene is empty. Um, it starts popping up billiard balls. And as you click them, each time you click one, the score in the upper right corner goes up. As soon as you get 15 balls uh, floating around, your game's over. So you go, the goal is to try to figure out, try to score as many points as you can before you get to 15. Um, and when I go back to here, um, this is what it looks like. They're floating around. Um, and one reason we really like this is notice how in the hierarchy window, as the balls appear in the scene, they show up, the, 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 the instances show up in the hierarchy window and, and then go back to my, and now it's, uh, since 15 of them appeared, uh, my, um, 
uh, the game is over and hit play again. You're gonna um, and what and the, and the, the pieces of this that you're gonna learn about are you're gonna learn about how to uh, create this UI. So if I click the two D view, you can see uh, there's the there's the score and there's the button. And you're gonna um, and what you're gonna learn about is Unity's way of instantiating objects, which is this idea of a prefab. Um, and uh, one interesting thing is, and I'm going to give you a sneak preview of the code here, is uh, if I go to, uh, the, I put everything in folders this time. If you look in the, uh, if you look in the, uh, uh, the, the, this, this controller, that this is actually what's actually controlling the game, um, it's got this line, instantiate. Um, you notice we're not using the new keyword. Under the hood, Unity is creating new instances, and you can get references to the instances. Um, but uh, and you can see, it took a second. Once Ryder finished processing it, it gave it all of its nice, uh, its nice syntax highlighting and all the awesome, uh, uh, ex really nice uh, Unity integration stuff that it has. Um, the uh, but you actually call instantiate um, because you need it, it needs to actually hook it up into its own system. Um, this is a, this is yet another stumbling block. A lot of advanced C sharp developers it doesn't even occur to them that you don't just create a new game object. You, you have to actually use Unity's instantiate and also uh, um, you know, in, in the uh, destroy to to destroy the object. Um, and the the reason is it's got to do a ton of stuff for performance. It's got to hook things up. It's uh, it's um, but for new C sharp developers, this is actually awesome. And the reason is because you see different syntax for creating objects, but it's the same concept. And especially seeing seeing the um, there's one thing. It's one thing to um, to to know that you've created and even work with the code, but it's actually seeing the the thing appear on the screen and then appear in the hierarchy window, and knowing that that's an instance that really helps connect connect some dots for people. Um, later on in uh, just a, a little bit more preview before we close out later on in the book, if you go to the very last page, uh, um, if the, uh, the other unity labs, you can actually make some of your game objects look like real complex physical objects. Unity has a really sophisticated AI path, AI driven pathfinding navigation system. So your game objects can move, move themselves on their own around unity scenes. We're going to add some sound effects. Um, and we're actually going to create a fun Unity version of a classic video game. Um, uh, you can get to all of the, all of those. You can download this. Uh, there's a, you know, there's going to be a, a Bitly link at the end of this um, where you can download the Unity Labs. You can also add, download this PDF. You can you can get everything off of our GitHub page um, in the Unity Labs folder. And you can download the first four chapters of Head for C Sharp. Um, and that's, uh, I feel like we're pretty much at time. That's everything I wanted to show you. And I really thank you so much for giving me the, uh, the opportunity to talk to everybody today. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, the the chat was uh, very active, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, you know what's interesting? Like I was just kind of while I was watching your presentation, I was thinking about things from the perspective of like uh, a seasoned C sharp developer, and some of the things that kind of might stick out. You were talking about like uh, like uh, like hurdles or like things that might trip up a seasoned C sharp developer. Uh, one of the big things, obviously, is like idioms, right? So uh, you were creating fields instead of say uh, properties. Properties, yes. Yeah, and uh, one of our viewers was asking, uh, why is that? Is that a performance thing? Um, do you have any insight about that uh, in particular? Well, so first of all, my answer to almost every idiosyncrasy of Unity is yes. Is there's going to be a performance reason for it? For example, why they're using structs for vectors. Uh, Unity does a ton of stuff under the hood. Um, mm -hmm. You, um, in general. Uh, you do use fields and not um, and not properties. Um, I'm pretty sure you could use a property. Um, I mean, but I I don't I I, I don't have a, 
I don't have a specific answer for that. However, mm -hmm. I'm almost positive that if you look in their scripting API and search for fields, um, and this is another thing I love about Unity, is I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere in here there is actually an explanation for why you, wh why most of the time people use fields. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. And more importantly, it's uh, it's something that uh, that will trip up a lot of C sharp, a lot of experienced C sharp developers coming into it, looking at code and seeing what why are all these fields? Wait. Um, yeah, you, you know, I guess for me too, it's like when I see it, uh, I'm sure performance is a is like a key reason Unity went the direction to use fields, but uh, I can't also help but feel like. Uh, C++ was always kind of the big boy in terms of game dev. Like people write their games in C++ or even C uh, historically. So to kind of appeal to the to the old crowd to kind of come over into the Unity uh, community, right? Like some of those idioms from C and C++ kind of just made their way over into Unity scripting. Uh, yeah. So I can imagine that's kind of why you're seeing things like lowercase fields and things like that that yeah they, they they and they definitely there was actually as a first of all i just added a, a property and it doesn't it doesn't show up um mm -hmm. but if i convert it to a field it should show up yep um and yeah um also a lot of a lot of it i 100 percent what you just said um yep. also uh f several years ago Unity actually did a big overhaul of their API, um, which uh, which was frustrating to some people, um, and especially some trainers who had a bunch of material for the old old version of it. Mm -hmm. um, we hadn't started using Unity, so it didn't really affect us at all. I <laughs> hadn't started using Unity at the time, but uh, there is there there were some things that are still left that that, that um, they're very careful about uh, since then, especially about uh, preserving stuff. There's just there's a lot of legacy stuff that's been in there forever, um, uh, and um, and a lot of things that that were that were uh, that were that were pulled in. Um, a lot of the stuff is also left over. Um, you notice it's uh, the script um, extends mono behavior. Mono, um, is, you can probably guess that it's it's Xamarin Mono, mm -hmm. um, but it's actually a fork of a really like a, a really it forked off of mono a long time ago. And so there's, there could be, so I, I'm, I know that there's a few things that are kind of left over from that. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of different reasons for stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you know, like if you're trying to get into unity now and you're maybe worried about performance, I've kind of been watching the unity team. They are, they are starting to investigate things like moving to .NET. Uh, you know, six and above and yeah. exploring things like source generators to kind of get better, you know, compile time things rather than really focusing on runtime uh, things like reflection, that kind of stuff. So uh, I know Unity, the Unity team is like actively looking at performance and getting the most out of uh, the code that you write. So uh, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff in the horizon. Um uh, another thing you, you mentioned um, about optimization, I just have like a neat little uh, history lesson, I guess, you know, like when people are talking about optimizing video games and things like that, uh, even the professionals sometimes make mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. I just saw this weekend that Mario 64 uh, for the Nintendo 64 was shipped with all the debug flags enabled. So. No. <laughs> the game itself actually doesn't run as fast as it could because they forgot to take those debug flags oh, out. Oh, wow. So. I had no idea. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So um, I don't see uh, Carol in the chat is mentioning the uh, serialized field attributes. Uh, there are a lot of attributes in Unity. So like uh, I'm sure there are ways to make your uh, components and game objects behave a little differently than, um, you know, initially that they behave like out of the box and stuff like that. So yes. um, yeah, uh, other than that, I'm not seeing anything else. Um, Andrew, do you have any last comments you'd like to say um, before I kind of wrap up? Um, mainly, uh, you know, Jenny and I have spent coming up on, coming up on 15 years now, uh, finding new and better ways to help people ramp up on C-sharp 
and different uh, C-sharp related technologies. We've really put a ton of work into making things easy for people. Um, so uh, it's, um, it's, really, uh, uh, it's really been just a, a pleasure to be able to give you, um, not just uh, give folks a um, uh, sort of a, a C-sharp developers intro to Unity, but also a little bit of behind the scenes on some of the, some of the things we've learned about um, uh, ways to, to help make things easier for people to ramp up. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, my DMs are generally open. Uh, anyone has any questions uh, or wants to get in touch, uh, feel free to ping me. I'm always happy to always happy to hear from hear from re readers or people in general who are, are interested in this stuff. And again, thanks thanks again for the opportunity. Really, really appreciate it. Oh yeah, th thank you for uh, taking your time and kind of showing folks. Uh, I know Unity and Game Dev like. Game dev generally, I think most folks get into development thinking one day they'll make a game. And mm -hmm. uh, given where we are with the uh, game engines and the proliferation of them and the accessibility to them, I think it's never been a greater time to actually get into game dev. So uh, yes. on that note, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, I'll share my screen here. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Thank you, folks, for joining us today. It's been really fun. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for showing us uh, an intro into Unity and uh, how it integrates with Brighter. Uh, it's it's it was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to learn more about Rider, you can head over to jetbrains.com for slash Rider. Uh, you can read some of our .NET um, blog posts over at blog.jetbrains.com. Uh, oh, I see Samosa sitting there. So thank you, Samosa, as well. I can't forget that. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at JetBrains Rider. Uh, head over to YouTube. Uh, if you like this webinar or you like any of our other webinars, be sure to uh, put a thumbs up, leave a comment. We're always looking at those and trying to get better. So thank you. Uh, if you want to know more about Andrew, you can follow him on Twitter at Andrew Stellman. Uh, he has his own site at stellman-green.com. And again, if you want to see these labs and you want to go through them yourself with Unity and Rider, uh, you can head over to the bit.ly uh, URL at unity underscore labs underscore Rider. So on that note, uh, thank you. And um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.